Hi, this is Lisa Crosby. I'm here to talk to you about Dynamics 365 Sales Insights, which is an add-on feature to Dynamics 365 that brings intelligence and AI for you to use with your CRM capability. This is my top 10 features in 10 minutes. So to get started, let's have a look at what Dynamics 365 Sales Insights adds in. There are some features that are already included that are insights features that are included in your Dynamics 365 sales license, which you'll see on the right there. You get the assistant, which offers suggestions about next best actions. But with the sales insights license, you get the ability to configure that for yourself. And I've got plenty of videos here which take you through how to do that. You also get the ability to have auto capture, which suggests in the timeline of Dynamics 365 sales, hey, here's an email you should track or an activity you should track. With sales insights, you get premium capability there that also suggests contacts you should track from incoming email. And I'll go through those and the rest of these, not in this order, because I'm going to go a 10 to 1 reveal here of what I see as the top 10 things that you can do with Dynamics 365 sales insights and bringing intelligence into your CRM. So here we go. Number 10 is a feature called talking points. What this does is picks up on emails that are coming in from your uh, clients or prospects that might be talking about points of interest like health, family, sports, those kinds of things. And that means that as a seller, next time you go in and have a look at that person's record in Dynamics, it will give you a prompt of something that's a, a talking point or a conversation to pick up with that person. The next one is a feature called who, who knows whom? I do love this for its grammatical correctness as much as its functionality. Uh, we can use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to help work out, you know, who else in our organization might know someone. But LinkedIn connections can be anything from someone who, you know, just connected with me in the community through to someone I've worked very closely with. And you can't really get a sense of the strength of that connection. So the idea here is that this is picking up on actual email interactions, exchange data, those kinds of things to establish, you know, if I want to reach out to this organization, who else in my organization has got a close relationship with them based on actual email interaction and so on with that person. So really kind of helps you with that strength. And I can go in this case, hey, Tricia, can you help introduce me uh, to this person um, at this new account that I want to be working with? Number eight, we have notes analysis. This one is one of my favorites. It's number eight, but I do actually really like this one. When you type a note into the timeline, it will come up with this blue highlight and actually suggest to you that you've got an action point there. And it will say new appointment suggestion. Shall I create an appointment? You just go, yes, please. So the note I've created here is something like had a great meeting. She would like to set up a, a, a call with the rest of the team next week. The system prompts me to say, do you want to create an appointment? I go, yes. And it just comes up with that quick create makes it super easy for me to do that. At number seven, we have the premium version of auto capture. So auto capture standard, you may have seen in the timeline comes up as an activity suggestion saying you need to track this email against this um, you know, account or contact or opportunity or whatever it is. With premium, you also get the auto capture for contact suggestions. So here, these are two people who have emailed me who don't exist in Dynamics and it's suggesting I should create them. So the auto capture feature both premium and standard is all about minimizing manual data entry. In this case, what I could do is just click on Emily, it'll pop up a quick create form and I can just go bang and done creates that person in the system. So much, much quicker way of doing that than having to start from scratch. And it's picking up on, as I said, people who've emailed you who might not be inside Dynamics already. At number six, and this one does actually take separate licensing. This is using telephony, but there is a feature in here which is amazing. If you're working in perhaps telesales or high volume sales and you need to coach people who are using phone for selling, this is conversation intelligence. And this actually takes you through, you know, what are your customers talking about? It pulls keywords out of the conversation, where are products being mentioned, where the sentiment is on the calls, are they high? 
higher or lower positive or negative sentiment, where are the brands being detected and so on. And you can drill down by seller and get a heap of cool metrics there. This is this is where AI gets into that, wow, <laughs> you can really do that kind of territory. But yes, in fact, you can. Uh, so if you're working with a call center kind of scenario where you want to be detecting those things to help with coaching and improvement, uh, certainly check that one out. Number five, this is if you are working in a situation where you have to develop relationships with clients, longer sales styles longer sales cycles, more complex uh, relationships, relationship analytics will give you a snapshot based on your interactions with that customer. Now, this actually exists across lead, account and opportunity. So you can see it in different places in Dynamics to say, how's our interaction with this customer going? How's our relationship going? You'll see on the screen here, we get some KPIs up front, we've initiated more calls than they have, who are the contacts their side, who are the contacts our side, how is our response rate? So you can see, is this all one way? <laughs> or is it a good relationship where we're getting uh, where we're getting good, good back and forth and comparing it to, um, to what's going on, um, you know, both ways and where those activities are happening. Number four, back to the idea here of working with a high velocity selling environment or perhaps a telesales, digital selling, absolutely relevant here, sales accelerator and sequencing. What this does is allows you to set up templates of sequences, templates of emails, all those kinds of things, queue them all up so that you want certain things done a certain way. So this is not for that complex, long-term high relationship selling. This is more where you might be dealing with hundreds or thousands of customers and you can put a template process and sequence in place. It will surface up for the seller a list of, of a work queue basically. Contact this person next, do this thing. They can work through that, use the templates as appropriate and work to the next one. So in terms of productivity and processing consistency, if you're working in an environment where you need those things, it's awesome. And number three, premium sales forecasting. Dynamics 365 has a relatively new sales forecasting feature in it. That's standard, but the premium forecasting allows you to take a snapshot of where the forecast was in time. So you can actually go back and go, why did that change? Where did that change? Whose things moved in or out of the pipeline? You get trends. You also get a prediction on where your forecast is going to land using AI of what's going on in the system. So this really lifts forecasting from great. We've got that in dynamics now instead of in a spreadsheet, but now we can leverage the AI features to get that ability to take a snapshot in the past and get trends and predictions for what will happen in the future. At number two, and two A and B, <laughs> I'm cheating a bit here. This is actually two features, predictive lead scoring and predictive opportunity scoring. I'm bundling them together because they are actually essentially the same thing. One works on lead and one works on opportunity. This is about helping the seller focus on the leads that are most likely to convert and the opportunities that are most likely to close based on what's happened in the past. You can actually influence the factors. You can go in and configure that so that certain things are influencing the score or you can just take it as it is and then you'll see you also get a trend on the opportunity score to see it went down it went back up again what are the things that are harming and improving the score it's a really nice kind of transparent explanation there about what's going on with the AI that is predicting that score you can also see a view of your opportunities and leads in order by score again to really focus in on those ones that are most likely to to win the deal. And this is my number one. This is my favorite one. This is the premium functionality that goes with the assistant. So you get standard cards for things like you've got an appointment coming up or a task overdue, but this allows you to configure your own next best actions. Again, video here if you'd like to learn how to do that. This takes you through things like being able to say, I want to prompt the seller with a resource for them to read, a policy document, um, information, a one pager, about what's going on. You can use it to launch a playbook of activities. A high value opportunity is at risk. You need to take the following steps and it prompts them with that. You can even use it to call a REST API um, out to other systems as well. So basically the ability to use Power Automate behind the scenes to configure your next best actions, put those in front of the sellers and suggest what they should be doing completely custom. 
So there you go. There's my Dynamics 365 Sales Insights Top 10 in order from 1 to 10 now so that you can look at all of those things. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful for you. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Heaps of tips, tutorials, videos on Dynamics 365, Power Platform and Microsoft Teams.